Rambo's Revenge. What the hell is this? Some sort of cheap knockoff of the Stallone First Blood movies? And what is this? An erotic thriller? Final payment? Hey, wait a minute. You know both these films star Tomas Millian, both have the same plot. And they both seem to have the same plot as the 1975 Italian poliziesco Syndicate Sadis, which I kind of feel like watching now. But why would I want to watch this 4x3 soft analog release? Hey, you run Blu-rays and DVDs? When I can watch 88 film shiny new disc of the movie, transferred from a new HD master. Go ahead, put that on the in-store telly. Not that I need a preview. I know that the very prolific Italian film industry made tons and tons of crime films in the 70s, but that Syndicate Sadist was directed by Umberto Lindsay, who's in the very top tier of Italian directors for action. Yeah, Umberto was a director who very famously yelled and screamed at his actors and crew, but it must have worked, because when it came to action, he got results. Umberto Lenzi worked with Cuban-born star Tomas Millán a number of times during the 70s, especially this middle 70s period where Tomas was starting his 10-year run of really colorful crime characters. The Hunchback, Monetza, both of which Umberto Lenzi would direct multiple performances of, and Nico Giraldi. And you look at the Rambo character in Syndicate Sadis, who dresses counterculture and has some quirky dialogue. Life is just one hole. You start from a hole. Feed yourself through a hole. You shit from a hole. You finish up in a hole. And you think, okay, this is a colorful Tomas Millian character, but it's nowhere near being his most extreme. And unlike all those other characters Tomas played, he only did one film as Rambo. So what's notable about it? Why should I care? Well, if you pay attention, you'll notice that Rambo is one of the sweetest, nicest portrayals by Tomas during his Eurocrime phase. Yeah, he's still a tough guy, but he doesn't have that aloof, hipper-than-thou quality where he's constantly putting other people down as he is in a lot of his crime comedies. In this movie, his old friend wants him to join a private police force, and Rambo isn't really a joiner, and he'd never wear a uniform like that, but he humors his friend, and he goes down to check it out anyway. Things like that. And when he goes on his ultimate quest for justice, he's really doing it for the sake of his friend's memory and for a kidnapped kid. Now, there's nothing to be frightened of, John Piero. You don't know me, but my name's Rambo, and I've come to get you out of here. I'm gonna take you home, all right? It's kind of like when screenwriters took that other extreme actor of the Eurocrime genre, the justice-obsessed, deadly serious Maurizio Merli, and gave him an important relationship with a nephew who made him go ice skating in the movie Hunted City just to try softening him up. All right, so back to Rambo's counterculture attire. Yeah, he spent much of the movie buried under hats, wrapped up in scarves, behind goggles, and this aided in Tomas being doubled on the motorbike, as Tomas was a rare case of a Eurocrime star not doing his own stunts. Reportedly in this film, the actual bike rider was a motocross champion. Tomas is only actually on the bike in certain close-up and medium shots, and in those shots, the bike is in turn on the back of a flatbed truck. Now, there's been speculation as to which came first. Did Tomas start wearing all these hats and hair pieces because his hair was thinning? Or did his hair start thinning because the scalp was constantly suffocated by all this headgear? No idea. All I know is that when he moved back to America in the mid-1980s and started acting in television, he suddenly looked like this. Now, the plot of this film, once it really gets going, is sort of a reinterpretation of the Yojimbo Fistful of Dollar storyline, with a drifter coming into town and insinuating himself between two rival gangs, sort of pitting them against each other. And there are little tiny nods to a fistful of dollars, whereas Clint Eastwood got a hidden metal breastplate shot full of bullets, Rambo gets a hidden bulletproof vest shot full of bullets. Hmm? But Rambo isn't trying to financially benefit from any of this. He's trying to save a young kidnapping victim. So many Italian films of the 70s dealt with kidnapping. Films with titles like Kidnap Syndicate and simply Kidnap. 
because this was a major crime wave in that country back then. All right, everybody, stay cool. You, clerk, put your money in a bag. Rambo's revenge. More like my revenge. Well, more vigilantism than revenge, but you get the basic idea. Come on, faster, man, faster! All right, this guy. Oh, that's gonna be your final payment, all right. But as I was saying, the influences in Syndicate Sadist aren't limited to Sergio Leone's A Fistful of Dollars, but also from another Clint Eastwood director, the films of Don Siegel, who directed Dirty Harry. Umberto Lindsay has publicly acknowledged that Don Siegel was a major inspiration for him, and when you see Syndicate Sadist Pool Hall Brawl, you can't help but to draw similarities to the one from Don Siegel's movie Coogan's Bluff, also with Clint Eastwood. <laughs> So, if you haven't gotten the picture now, this supposed Rambo movie has no resemblance to First Blood. So what's the connection? Well, as the story goes, Tomas was in New York and he happened to pick up a copy of the 1972 novel First Blood. He dug the character name of Rambo, which apparently is not a true Italian name with any meaning, but it sort of sounds like it is. The film was apparently shot under the working title Rambo vs. the City, but the distributor changed the name to Il Giustitiere Sfida la Città, which translates to The Avenger Challenges the City. Reportedly, the same distributor later did end up distributing First Blood in Italy, just for extra confusion. In the end, some releases tried to embrace the Rambo connection, tried a little too hard, and some tried to distance themselves. Of the supporting cast, Joseph Cotton, a Hollywood actor who is a regular in Orson Welles films, is one of the mob bosses. Perhaps we're to infer that Cotton didn't dig the Rambo name either, as he just can't ever seem to pronounce it correctly. Well, we'll have to kill Rambo. 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 And amongst the supporting Italian cast is Antonio Casale, uh, most famous for playing the big plot point with a name, Bill Carson, in The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Okay, as if that's not enough. Let's wrap up with a nerdy lightning round of Eurocrime trivia. All right. Syndicate Sadist is not the only Eurocrime film to use the Yojimbo Fistful of Dollar Story pattern. There's also Loaded Guns from the same year, 1975. And it's not the only Eurocrime film to shoehorn a karate scene into a non-karate movie. There's also Gangbuster, Left Hand of the Law, Manhunt in the City, and Violence for Kicks. Hell, it's not even the only Eurocrime movie to, and yeah, this one's what you kiddies call a spoiler, so cover your ears if you want. Not even the only one to include a blind mob boss. Cross Shot and Milan Caliber 9 also have mafia bosses with no eyesight. In my documentary Eurocrime, the Italian cop and gangster films that ruled the 70s, I go into a lot of the stock scenes that turn up all the time in the genre. I didn't, however, have time to include The Gambling Raid, the raid of a gambling parlor, which is another staple scene. And yes, Syndicate Sadist puts it to use. Other films that have gambling raids are Gang War in Milan, Street Law, Rome Arm to the Teeth, Battle of the Godfathers, Gambling City, and... Hero Crime Trivia Brain Meltdown. Should have thought of that. See that from time to time. Oh well. At least I saved his store from being robbed. Yeah.